Welcome back to the channel. This is Simon Cromer, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you six simple steps to wax your boat. Let's get into the video right now. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and follow us on Instagram where we're gonna post more of our daily work and tricks, tips, and videos on how we detail each and every day. Now guys, this video is gonna be a super practical yet simple way to wax your boat and we're gonna cover this in six steps so that any boat owner or any boat detailer can wax their boat optimally and in the best efficient way possible. So step number one is wash your boat. And I didn't show this in this video, but all you wanna do is simply wash your boat with a degreaser to make sure that you got all the oils and all the dirt off your boat so that you have a nice, clean, fresh surface to wax and work with. So I think this is pretty straightforward. All you gotta do is get some Dawn dish soap, wash your boat down, strip all the oils off, make sure it's clean. You have a fresh, clean, clear surface so that the wax is gonna create a good bond to your surface. So guys, that's step number one. Easy, simple there. Um, let's move on to step number two now. So this is where it gets a little bit more challenging for people who maybe aren't sure of what to do in this part of the process. So step number two is pick out the right machine. So what are you looking for in a machine when you're waxing a boat? Um, first of all, my recommendation would be a random orbital polisher, which is what I'm using here. So this is the Rupes Mark III. LHR 15 it's a random orbital it is more towards the expensive side so you don't have to get this exact machine they do have a Griot's garage version which is I believe retails for about 169 or 179 on Amazon that will also work great as well and if you're just the boat owner who simply needs to do this cost effectively or doesn't want to spend any extra money on another machine you can use the rotary so these are the two options, a orbital, a random orbital, which I have here, or a rotary buffer. So two options. Um, I think the random orbital is gonna spread the wax a little easier. It also allows you to build a reach. Um, in, this, in this case, I am standing over the water on a beam, so I need to use the machine with one hand, so this makes it super easy. If I had a buffer, I would not be able to do that. So I just think in terms of ease of application, the random orbital is certainly a lot easier to use, uh, but the buffer can absolutely be used as well, as long as you have the right pad. So that actually takes us into the next step, which is step number three. What pad should I use? Now, again, we're gonna have two options. We're gonna have a number one option and a number two option. So the best option is to find a flat foam pad. If you're gonna use a waffle foam, that is better for cutting or compounding or polishing whereas a flat foam pad is better for spreading out products. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to use a flat foam pad instead of a waffle, or you're probably gonna miss some spots on the boat. Um, and it just makes it for an easier application. So here I'm using the Rupes Medium Pad. So this is the Rupes Medium Soft Foam Pad, which I will put up here on the screen. If you have a random orbital, the five inch is the pad I'm using with the five inch orbital. Now they also make a six inch orbital, which is the 21. Like I mentioned previously, I have the 15. So that would be a six inch. So make sure you get the right pad size for whatever machine you have. And if you have a rotary, again, get a flat foam pad um, and you can get whatever brand out there that makes a seven inch pad, which off the top of my head, I'm not sure. But I will find something and I will throw it in the link below the YouTube video. So also number two option would be a soft microfiber pad. So a soft microfiber pad is a finishing pad that you can also use with wax. However, that pad will typically absorb more wax, which would mean that you're going to probably use a little extra product um, in terms of it being on the pad instead of actually on the boat. So if you want to save some excess product and be really cost effective, use a foam pad and not the microfiber. But the microfiber is also another great option. And if you need to do a little bit more, I guess if you have a surface that is not perfect and ready to be simply waxed, I would probably go with the microfiber pad because it will probably do a little bit more cutting than a foam pad. 
So that is also another thing to keep in mind. Um, and yeah, again, you can have a buffer option or you can have the random orbital option, which is what I recommend. But those are the two pad types that you should use for waxing your boat. So now this brings us into the grand question of why we're even doing this, which is what is the best wax? So first of all, if you haven't watched my video previously, which was quite a while ago about a wax versus a polymer versus a ceramic coating, make sure to go watch that video. But basically a wax is a natural product that is just gonna simply set on top of your gel coat. So the wax doesn't even technically bond to the surface. It just is an oil that sits on top of your gel coat. So think of this like grease. Like if I were to put grease on top of your gel coat, well, it's just gonna sit there and eventually it's gonna come off. So it's an oil that kind of stays on your boat no bonding properties. So get rid of the wax, don't use the wax. Use a polymer sealant because that is the next level up. And in terms of price, it's not much more expensive. So I am using Jeskar Ultra Lock, which is the new polymer sealant from Jeskar, which they make incredible sealant products. Um, and they also make a Minzerna line, which is also amazing. So Jeskar is definitely my go-to for wax. So this is a polymer sealant, which is infused with SiO2, which is silicone dioxide. And this is gonna increase the hydrophobic properties. So the water beading, and it's gonna enhance the gloss and the shininess of your coating. So really a cool thing that Jessicar did with this product is they made, you know, better gloss, more hydrophobic properties, and an easy wipe off application. Now you can expect about six months out of this product so if you have pretty much zero to little oxidation in your boat, you can expect about six months of time before you will have to reapply the polymer versus a wax, which is probably gonna only last two, maybe three months max at most if you're lucky. And yeah, it's just amazing. So if you live up north, you're gonna get a full season out of this. If you're off the Great Lakes, if you're in Canada, if you're in freshwater, you may and you probably will get six months out of this product if you're in florida again you might get a little less but you're probably going to want to do this application process twice a year so two times a year is my recommendation for waxing your boat to maintain it properly so make sure that after you do wax your boat that you are maintaining it properly so don't use degreasers don't use dish soap make sure you wash your boat with a ph balanced soap such as stark pure clean or any pH balanced soap out there because if you do use a degreaser, if you do use this soap, this will take off the polymer sealant. Now the polymer sealant does have a better bond versus a wax because you're getting molecules that are gonna link together when you apply it to the substrate, which would be the gel coat or the paint. And this is gonna form a close chain of synthetic material. So it's kind of like a plastic going over top of your boat. So this is providing true protection. It's gonna take a little bit longer for the salt to take it off going to take longer for the sun to take it off and for other you know degreasers or for other chemicals to take it off but it still is going to come off rather quickly than if you're going to compare a polymer to a ceramic coating which would be the next level above that so those are things to keep in mind jescar ultra lock is the best polymer sealant that i have found on the market today which is why i'm sharing this video with you to share more knowledge and to spread awareness for some of the better boat detailing products out there because I know it sucks to struggle each and every year wondering why or how you can get your boat to look better. And I'm telling you, Just Car Ultra Lock is one of those products that's gonna change the game for you and your boat in terms of protection. So this leads us into the last two questions. So number five would be, how do I apply? So we've covered washing the boat. We've covered making sure you pick out the right machine making sure you have the right pad, making sure you have the best polymer possible. And now we're on to patterns. So the pattern is vertical and horizontal. So if you go in both directions, you will be sure that you cover the whole area of the boat versus if you were to just do one direction. So I always like to do every section vertical and horizontally with my machine to make sure I cover the entire part of the boat because you really don't wanna miss any spots of the boat or else it's just gonna look silly when you go to wash the boat and part of your boat's beating, but not some other parts of the boats aren't. So 
that would be a little bit embarrassing. So make sure you cover the whole surface. Uh, try to cover it equally and just spread out the wax across the whole surface. Now you might be wondering, how long do I need to wait until I wipe off the primer? So the primer can usually sit for, my range would be 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the heat, depending on the sun, depending on the level of your surface and in terms of how nice the surface is. So if you have oxidation in your boat, you're gonna wanna wipe that primer off quick. And also I would recommend that you don't wax your boat and that you do some detailing prior to that. But if your boat is in great condition, uh, such as the boat we are working on here, which is should be expected and should be your standard before you end up putting a polymer or any kind of protection on your boat, would be 10 to 20 minutes. So basically I could run this whole haul and then come back and wipe it off. So you get a pretty good amount of time. You get good workability because it does have that SiO2 in there, which is gonna give you that extra work time. So it's pretty, uh, pretty flexible in terms of how long you need to wait, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, max 30 minutes. Uh, if you're indoors detailing, sure, 30 minutes is fine. Um, but yeah, that is my recommendation. So this leads us into our last and final question, which is wiping off the excess polymer. So you wanna get a plush microfiber towel, such as this blue one I have here, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you wipe all of the excess off. Go over it multiple times, flip over the towel, use all sides of the towel you are going to get a lot of sides if you fold it into fours and you continue to rotate it so one to two towels wipe off all the excess and guys we have covered everything so i'm going to throw the steps up on the screen one more time now if you liked the video be sure to leave a like be sure to comment below your thoughts share this video to other people so that we can reach more people and guys if you haven't hit the subscribe button what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button now, and I will see you on the next video. Peace out.